We're making seats today. We are. If you're new to this channel, we're James and Sarah, also known as The Whole World or Nothing. We used to be full-time backpackers, exploring the world and writing about our travels on our blog. And then the world changed. We got repatriated from Peru and found ourselves back in the UK at a loose end. So we decided to do a van conversion. Make sure you hit subscribe now so you can join us in this series as we share the highs and many lows of converting an old Mercedes Sprinter panel van into our dream home on wheels. Our first stop was to a fabric shop to pick up some stuff to cover our seats in and we were immediately overwhelmed by the sheer amount of choice there was. The guys here were really helpful and after a discussion about what we were intending to do with the fabric gave us some good advice on which ones would be most suitable. Well we got what we got. This I think is our foam for our seats. There's five pieces which is what we ordered. Hopefully. <laughs> and it feels quite soft so <clears throat> I'm going to unwrap it because I want to see that they actually fit you know what I mean like test them on this one seat that we've done yeah I know we've got the other one as well we've got the pull out thing yeah yeah so we yeah. can test them on those two yeah and also just measure them make sure that um, they are the measurements that we sent off for because we um, sent them directly to the company that makes the foam and we asked for them to be custom sizes like but kind of to the half centimetre so pretty accurate <laughs> so let's see this is fragile but it's foam We had a little fight with the packaging and threw them on the two seats we had to try them out for size. We then decided that now would probably be a good time to build the remaining seat, so we quickly knocked it together. We used exactly the same method as the last one, really simple, just a very basic wooden frame screwed together and covered in ply, with a hinge lid to allow us access to the space underneath. Which is when we realised that the foam didn't actually fit. This is our foam that we're using, Dora foam it's called. It's about 10 centimetres thick and we ordered it to fit in the spaces in the van. However, we did the measurements before we built the furniture so it's actually a little bit too big. Which is better than it being too small, however, it means that we're going to have to cut some off the edges. But we've watched a couple of videos, looks like it should be easy enough with the electric knife. That word's banned, remember. Simple enough. Mm. Straightforward. There we go, that's all right. Um, yeah, see how it goes. So, I know we're not supposed to use that word, but that was actually easy, wasn't it? Okay, I'll give you that one. That <laughs> was really easy. Yeah. So if you are cutting foam, we watch quite a few videos and there's loads of different techniques on how to do it. Like you can buy an actual foam cutter, which costs so anywhere from 150 quid up to, I don't know, a thousand quid. Or you can do it with a normal bread knife, like manually cutting through it. You can do it with, um, I don't know, people do it with like hacksaws, with Stanley knives. But seriously, this is literally like a knife through butter. because the pressure was on that I was filming it but it's fine mm. the technique we devised was to draw a straight line directly onto the foam where we wanted to cut and then line that up with the straight line of the bench underneath using the knife to make sure it was right we then pushed the bottom of the knife to the bench to keep it in line and just eyeballed the top Yeah, 
easy to fit. Yeah, much better. Is that all right? Yeah, it's a little bit of a little bit of room now. Cool. Because the thing is, obviously, the material's got to go on. Well, we've got a wrap to put on to stop the foam light breaking up, and then the material, and then on the back of them, there's going to be the zip, but that's also going to come around the corners. So needs to be enough space for all that. So we've left probably around a centimetre yeah. space, not on each side in total, so half a centimetre on each side just yeah. for the uh, covers that are going on uh, for a little bit of wiggle room. Hopefully that's enough. I think so. I mean, you don't want them flopping about, do you? No, they need to be kind of tight in so the space. Should be okay, I think. It's looking good. I kind of like the pale blue. <laughs> Well, they're not going to be far off. They're going to be grey, aren't they? So mm. Completely yeah. different colour, yeah. All right, I'll go get on the sewing machine with my mum. Okay. <laughs> so the moral of that story is to not worry if you order the wrong size foam. It's pretty easy to put right. This is the stuff that I was talking about that's going to go between the fabric of the seat covers and the foam to protect the foam so it's just like mesh like really thin um, just a protective cover it's pretty cheap um, you can buy it just off um, Amazon or any any fabric place I'll put a link in the description to where we got ours from basically if you open up your um, set e-cushion covers this is what you're going to find inside between the um, between the foam and the and the fabric of your setting <laughs> To keep things simple and so there wasn't a seam running around the entire cushion, we made each cover out of a single piece of material. So it was just a case of measuring and cutting each one out and leaving enough overlap for the seams. The trickiest part was then designing the zip sections. My mum used to be a tailor so this was all her, I was just assisting. Her sewing skills are professional standard, but I did stitch up some bits you weren't going to see, so I should point out that it was me who was responsible for this Frankenstein stitching. Once we'd squeezed the covers onto the cushions, my mum then did her thing creating some neat pleats on the corners and hand stitching some final sections together. Next we moved on to creating a roll up blind for the garage so that everything in there wouldn't be on show when we had the back doors open. The design is really simple so you definitely could give this a go without any experience, it's just that my mum is so quick she saved us days by helping us make these. So this is the blind that my mum helped us made. Well, I say helped, made it. I cut it out. And designed it. And some, that. some of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did it together, we did it together. Right, so that's going there, up behind there. This is the pole that I've made for it. It's a little bit big, but it's just the wood that we had. So, you know, um, I've just rounded the corners off so that it's not like rubbing on the fabric or anything. Yeah. So that's gonna go in there. And then we're just going to fasten that up behind there where there's a space through these two um, battens of wood at the side. And then I'll show you what it looks like properly. Ta -da! What do you Perfect. think? Perfect. Look at that. It looks brilliant. It's really good, nice. doesn't it? 
Yeah, so that's going to have like a couple of functions, stop people seeing in the back when we open the back doors, but also it's probably going to stop that draft that sometimes comes up from the back yeah. into the sleeping area. Because there's a little gap here between where the mattress is and where the door is, so it sometimes feels a bit cold here. That is smart. It looks nice, doesn't it? I'm really pleased with that. It looks great. So my mum is making our blinds for us. How amazing does this look? So that's the first one, just a little window at the back there. Um, just about to do the template for that one over there. So we don't get any peeping toms looking in at us, perving on us. But yeah, I'm so impressed. They look really, really, really good. The other ones are gonna be held in place by magnets, I think, but because there isn't any, magnetic availability any metal back here she's just put two elasticated loops on each side onto these little hooks to hold it in place and this side is the same carpet that we used for the um to stick on the metal the metal trim that we've used in the van and the other side is just the reflectix that we use for the vapor barrier so she's just stuck those together with spray adhesive and then just sewn the this herringbone trim i think it's called around the edge there to finish it off and i think they look dead smart so impressed with them i'm just going to get the template sorted for this one so she can make the next one um the windows are tinted so during the daytime you can't see into the van but when it's night time and you've got the lights on inside you can just see straight through so not only are we going to be using these as temperature control because the windows are a weak point for that um, it is going to give us a lot more privacy in the living area here if you've watched the whole of our van build series you'll remember us frustratedly trying to make templates for our insulation by sticking pieces of paper together so make sure you save any big pieces of card packaging that you get throughout converting a van it makes life so much easier. The spray glue we used to stick the window covers together was the same as we used to stick the carpet into the van. It's a specific high temperature resistant one. There's a link to it in the description. Those little tabs you can see have magnets sewn into them, which is what holds this window cover in place, as there's metal underneath the carpet trim around the window for it to stick to. Whoa! That looks great! Next we moved on to making the blinds for the front of our cab. As you know, our cab area is closed off from our living area, so these were less about privacy and more about temperature control. But we made the passenger and driver door covers in exactly the same way as the side door, with magnets sewn into the trim to hold them in place. Getting the template right for the windscreen was much trickier because it was just so big we didn't have a single piece of card to work with, but we got there in the end.
To fix this window cover in place, we used some high strength suction cups that attach through the material. They work really well even in super sunny weather and fold up and tuck just behind our driver's seat in the cab for storing. Well, it's been an absolutely mad, emotional, at times testing, but ultimately hugely rewarding journey getting to this stage. We really hope you've enjoyed coming along with us and we want to take the opportunity to say a big thank you to everyone who supported us along the way. Many of you have become friends to us now, you know who you are, and we hope to see you on the road one day. But before you start crying into your popcorn, whilst this is the last in the series of our van build proper, it's not entirely the end for our van build videos. Yeah, that's right, we've got a couple of roundup videos that we're going to be doing to explain some stuff that we initially skipped over, like installing our Wi-Fi and hooking up our inverter, and there were a few bits and pieces that we changed almost as soon as we moved in, which we think might be helpful to show as well. We're also going to be doing videos on things like the cost of the build, things we'd changed having lived in it for almost a year now, and we've got a few other fun build-related vids planned as well. Plus, if there's anything that you'd like us to make a video on, then drop it down in the comments below, and we'll see what we can do. So that's it for this week. We really hope you enjoyed it. You know what time it is. Hit that thumbs up button down below and jump into the comments for a chat with us. And if you're new around here and this is the first video that you've watched, then lucky, lucky you. You've got a whole van build playlist to catch up on. So hit the subscribe button and that little alarm bell too, and then go get stuck into our build from the very start. Next week, we're gonna be rounding up some of the bits that we didn't manage to show during the build, but definitely stuff you'll be interested in. Catch you then.